Welcome back everyone. So in today's video, we're going to see the new features that Spline has come up with in their alpha release. So once we go to the update section here, we can see that there's a milestone update that they have released. So these are nothing but new features. So we'll try to quickly go through each of these features and see what they are. So starting off with the first one, which is 3D vector editing, and this is really cool. We have this new tool here, which says vector. And using this, you can just start drawing like you do on any other vector tool like Illustrator or Figma. And once you're done drawing it, you can convert this 2D vector into a 3D object which makes it really an interesting part of this update. So to show you a quick demo on this, let me just try to take simple 2D icon and convert it into a 3D icon. So for that, I'm just taking this bell icon here and then we'll try to convert this into a 3D icon. For which firstly, I'm gonna use the pen tool here and try to trace this icon here. So I'm just trying to do a quick vector tracing here. So as you can see, I'm just using the pen tool, just like we use it on Illustrator or Figma. And here we have one more object at the bottom. You can adjust the points and everything. So there we go, that is done. So I'll just remove the image. And as you can see, this is now currently just a 2D vector shape and I can rotate it in all angles and see. So what you gotta do is select each of these shapes here and at the right, you have this option called as extrusion. So just increase this extrusion uh, to how much of a thickness you want and that'll change your 2D shape into a 3D object. So you can adjust this extrusion value to how much of a thickness you want for your 3D shape. And I'll give the same properties for this bottom shape also. And the next thing you gotta do is change the lighting to physical to ensure that you have proper physical lighting on the object. And this will give a proper 3D look to the object. And as you can see, when I rotate this, it looks and feels like a real 3D object. And if you feel that some curves or anything is wrong, just like any other vector tool, you can just double click on this and edit the vector points again. So that is a really cool part about this. So next, let's try to add some color to this. So I'll choose the color type as gradient here, and then we'll try to add some colors to this. So at one end, I'll try to give this as a bright yellow. And at the other end, I'll try to give it an orange shade. So that looks good. So for the bottom shape, I'll just give it as a solid color. So maybe some dark orange here. So yeah, that looks good. And I can just rotate it and see. So it looks really good. So something what is missing here, I feel is a lighting. So let's go ahead and try to add a light source to this and see how it looks. So what I'll do is I'll go to the plus button here and then we have different type of light sources here. So let's go with spotlight and give it a shiny edge on one side. So that should look good. So here I have the spotlight. I'm just trying to set it at different angles and see which looks good. So you can just uh, adjust the properties as per your liking. And finally, I'm just increasing the environment light here just to give it some finishing touch. So there we go, everything looks good. And finally, you can just export this as an image and make it PNG. Also make sure that you change the background color to opacity of zero. So that should show the transparency. And now I just click on export. And finally, I can just go to the file explorer and bring this image onto any design tool and use it on the designs. So this is a great way to convert your 2D icons into 3D icons. So moving on to the next one, which is post-processing. So this is a new feature. So once you're done creating your whole 3D scene, you can enable this post-processing and apply these various effects onto your whole scene. This is a great way to include effects like these noise and then you can add some glitch effect and all that. So this is a great feature too. Now moving on to the next one, which is file sharing. So once you go to the home screen here and on the file, if you click on the three dots, you have this option to share it. So once you click on share, you can basically enter the email IDs and share this file with different people and invite them to your file. So that's a new feature. And the next one is new interactions. So Spline has added a couple of new interactions here. So firstly, I'll just group all these shapes into one. And once I add a new event here, you can see that in the type menu, we have new options here, which are nothing but look at and follow. So let's go ahead and try the look at feature here. So once I click on look at, you have a property to add distance. So that is the distance at which the object looks at you or the cursor in this case. So as you can see, as I move the cursor here, the object tries to look towards it. So that is a look at feature. And the next one here is follow. So once I select follow and click on preview, you can see that the object just tries to follow your cursor. So that is the follow property. So overall, those are the different new features that Spline has provided in their alpha release. So that's really great and hoping to see more updates from them. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you found it informative and helpful. Thanks for watching.